Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Now listen, popping in. I want to talk to you about something because I was just talking to my niece about this and I talked to a lot of young men about this. I talked to a lot of young athletes about this as well. And this is one of the things that we struggle with and that is our appearance. Now, if you look around, and I want you to think about this, but if you look around and in every race, you're going to see this and not just our appearance, but I also want you to think about it as religion is concerned, because I know for a fact, a lot of black men are only Muslim because they think Christianity is the white man's religion. Again. I know for a fact, a lot of black men are only Muslim because they think Christianity is a white man's religion. Not realizing that the Bible was not written in English. The Bible does not come from America. Jesus Christ never stepped foot in America. Never. But somehow, because white people have power in America and painted Jesus' blonde hair and blue eyes, it made black people think that Christianity is a white religion. So therefore, there was a large exodus from Christianity to the nation of Islam out of rebellion. It wasn't because they thought Allah was a real God. It was not it wasn't because they were uh, they were delivered. It wasn't because they prayed and prayers were answered. It wasn't because they saw signs and wonders. It literally was because of rebellion. But a lot of times we don't we don't analyze the root of why we do things. So I want you to think about your appearance because it's a lot of people with piercings all over the place, with tattoos all over the place, with hair, certain hairstyles, certain clothing styles, just certain things that we do. We got to ask ourselves, is this out of rebellion? Or is this who I truly am? Is this a true representation of who I am? Or what is the real reason I'm doing this? I know for men as black men, and I'm, and, and I'm just speaking from personal and what I know. And then if you're a woman, then you got to evaluate it from a woman's perspective. But I know when I was coming up, we all, a lot of us got locks. A lot of us, we call them dreads. The, the new age people with them call them locks, especially women. A lot of men still call them dreads. And we, we call them dreads because we want it to be dreadful. We want it to be dangerous. We want it to be scary. There was nothing about dreads that we thought was handsome. It was nothing about dreads that we thought was attractive. We want it to look dangerous. We want it to look violent. We want it to look tough. We want it to look like a thug. So all of the thugs, 100%, all of the thugs, not, not all of them, the ones who was really, really him, they wore a low cut like what I got right now. The ones who was really about that, about that action, about that life, they wore a low cut. Because they didn't have to try to be nothing other than who they wanted to be and what they thought looked good and what they thought was comfortable. But for a lot of us who really were not him, we really weren't built for that life. A lot of us, we wanted to go get the dreads and used to call them, you know, some people call them wicks. And, and the, the term back then was... Boy, you wit, boy. Boy, you wit. 
Hey, everybody, boy, you wick on them, boy. And wick was short for wicked. See, we don't even think about these curses and these spells. We don't even think about it. We want to ignore it. We want to dance around it. And then sometimes we want to give it our own meaning. But we want to ignore the foundation of it. The reason of it. The real reason and behind it. We want to ignore it. See, but see, I'm, I'm, I'm coming to shine a light. And see, you could get offended if you want to get offended. If it don't apply, let it fly. If it don't fit, you must have quit. But if it step on your toes, it's because you're walking out of line. So see, a lot of time we don't think about, is this look out of rebellion? A lot of people get tattoos out of rebellion against their parents. Out of rebellion against their religion. Out of rebellion against their upbringing. A lot of people get piercings out of rebellion. A lot of people cut their hair. A lot of women shave their hair. Shave their hair off out of rebellion. Not nah, nah. We ain't talking about if you did it for, you know, you got to heal your scalp or, you know, something like that. We ain't talking about that. We addressing, is your appearance rooted in sin or rebellion? It's a lot of, it's a lot of women who dress scantily clad because they look up to women with a Jezebel spirit. So sometimes it's up. It's subconsciously they see this type of woman that got the attention of men. And they say, why does this woman, why does this type of woman got all the attention from the men? And that type of woman, that type of woman had her booty cheeks hanging out. How her breasts, all her cleavage out. Have all her stomach out, all her back out. And men staring, gawking and approaching this woman and this woman get this man and she she use she uses sex against him she uses her sexuality her femininity she uses against this man and she puts this man in a trance this man buying her cars clothes jewelry and so then the women who are dressed covered up they they realize they don't have the same effect on the men that they come in contact with. And so they'll start to emulate the attire of the Jezebel spirits. So a woman could be a virgin, but dressing like a Jezebel because she see the Jezebel getting the attention. And see a lot of what we do, you got to look at, if you have a hairstyle that is outside of the norm for your race, body type, age, you got to get to the root of why do you have that hairstyle? Why did you have that hairstyle? Who influenced the hairstyle? Who influenced the makeup style, who influenced the jewelry style. See, you got to think about this because we see people that we envy or that we think are cool or we think they are the standard and we emulate that. So there's a hairstyle with men that's kind of like a, it's kind of like a high top. But, you know, it's not like the kid and play high top is it's kind of ruffled. So it look like it's nappy, but they do that intentionally. Right. And so that hairstyle, the origin of it. Is. A pro athlete. Who. 
live in a city that's a small town and he doesn't trust the barber. So instead of getting a, a low Caesar, getting a fade, get something that acquire real talent, he let his hair grow out. And because he, he, he wakes up and he got millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands, so he just wake up and go. So his hair is not combed. It's not brushed. It's just in his natural state. And he run his hand through it. He run his hand through it and he do like this, trying to get it to stand up on, trying to get it to stand up because it be smashed down when from sleeping. So now, because he's a millionaire, because he's a pro athlete, we look at him and we say, oh, that must be the style. Not realizing it's really just because his barber is a thousand miles away and he just don't want to keep going to somebody giving them the opportunity to mess his head up so he just let his hair grow out the other genesis of that hairstyle is a man who is smoking heavy weed some men when they start to smoke heavy they stop keeping up with their appearance they stop getting haircuts they stop shaving their face they stop clipping their fingernails they stop brushing their teeth as regular and they start to get this rough and dingy look. Sometimes when a person has a beard, it's because they have a booty chin. The man has a booty chin. And that's the chin with the little dip in the middle. And so it looked like this, it looked like a booty. He have a booty chin, so he grows out a beard. And a man will see, oh, here's a millionaire and he got a beard. James Harden made the thick beard very popular. But James used to have what we call shark mouth. And what shark mouth was like multiple layers of teeth and several teeth going in different directions. And so being that James since then he got uh, Invisalign, but it, the beard had become famous by then. So when James being a millionaire and a great basketball player started wearing his thick beard, it helped hide the shape of his face and it helped him, it take the attention away from his teeth. So, but men all of a sudden go get a beard not realizing that they emulating a man that they think is an alpha male, that they think is super confident and not understanding that Mr. T, James Harden, all any black man with a beard or any man with a beard, even Duck Dynasty and them, it could have just been because they ain't had no barber. You know, the white guys with the long beard, it could have been they ain't had no barber or they didn't want to go to a barber or they was living out in, in rural area to where they just didn't shave and but then we'll see these people as tough or accomplished or what have you and then we emulate them we emulate them it's just kind of like the bbls a bbl come from insecurity so now you're taking you'll see this woman who she may be the most insecure woman and she's a celebrity and because she go and get a bbl now, everyday women who are not celebrities, who don't have a brand to uphold, who don't have an image to uphold in front of millions, don't nobody know you but your co-workers, nobody even looking at you like that, nobody even looking at your booty, and then you go risk your life to get a BBL. And it's because of who you seen with a BBL. And not even... But yet, a lot of women want to be married. But don't even think to ask a man, hey, do you think a BBL is attractive? Like, a married man will let his wife go get a BBL after he done married her. Because he, 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 he locked in now. But to be honest with you, men who respect themselves... And who have dignity and character and integrity do not want a woman with a noticeable BBL. 
if you're able to get a BBL and it's hard to tell, okay, that, that ain't going to hurt you. But if you get a BBL and you go to look alike, build an ant. Like a lot of women don't understand, women understand it now, but a lot of women don't understand that the body that the Kardashians have is not a tractor. It's not a tractor because the booty don't match the top of the thighs. Not attractive at all. It, everything got to be, the booty got to match the thighs, got to match the kneecaps, got to match the calves. It got to go together. When you got this round old, it's rounded, round old booty, hip sticking out, and then it go to a little stick leg. Uh-uh. 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 Mm, mm, mm. Can you get it taken out and, and do some squats? If you get ready to do it, not see the thing about it is is like women going to get augmentations. It's like listen, your chest being the way it is, it match your nose. It match your jaw bones. Like a man don't care nothing about no chest. And a woman don't care nothing about your chest. So why do you care about your chest? Why are you finna go under the knife when don't nobody care about your chest? Ain't nobody looking at you. Well, I have to look at it. Why do you care? Because you think other people care. Because if you didn't think other people care, then it wouldn't matter. We, I got on clothes right now because cause of you. Me, I'm comfortable with my naked body. I got on clothes and a hat because of you. See, we got to be real about this thing. We got to be real with this thing. See, we we a lot of times we operating from a place of hate. We operating from a place of self-hate. We operating from a place of sin. We operating from a place of rebellion. We operate from a place of lust got to really think about this thing and get this thing together now and i want you to what i want you to do is whatever you're getting ready to do or whatever you've already done in your appearance in your clothes in your house in your whatever it is get ask yourself what is the root what is the root what's the root reason I have this piercing in this abnormal place. What is the root reason I have this abnormal hairstyle? What is the root reason I have these tattoos or I want to get these tattoos? What is the root reason I want to go do surgery on a part of my body? What is the root reason? Get to the root. Get to the root. Is it for health reasons, self-love reasons, or is it because of rebellion? Is it because of sin? Is it because of lust? Is it because of insecurity? Is it because of self-hate? Is it because someone you envy or someone you idolize has this thing get to the root reason and then if you realize that root need to be plucked up then pluck it up pluck it up have a paradigm shift in your mind make a change in your heart and move differently i'm telling you I'm seeing people missing out on jobs because they don't want to change their hairstyle when their hairstyle is rooted in rebellion. Missing out on jobs and opportunities. Oh, well, I'm going to be me. And oh, people got to accept me, but you're not, you not, they're not accepting you for who you are because it's not you. You're doing it because you've seen somebody else do it. That's why you're doing it. Get to the root of it. Get to the root of it. 
And I'm going to tell y'all, nine out of ten things that we be doing look a mess. Look an absolute mess. Look a absolute mess. I'm going to tell you. I was talking to Manish, talking about I'll, I'll be willing to get rid of my septum, my septum ring. Listen, I'm going to tell y'all. They put that on cows. They put that on slaves. I'm going to tell y'all. That's that. Them, them, listen. If you get a piercing outside of this here, your earlobe, a lot of times y'all get it in your nose and it look like a you look like you got a bug in your nose. Listen, if ain't nobody going to tell you, I'm going to tell you. You don't like me, you want to unsubscribe from me for telling you the truth that your friends and your mama and them ain't telling you. I'm going to tell you. It look a mess. It look a mess. It look a mess. I'm going to tell you. Y'all is you going and you putting too much stuff in your lips. Your lips, your lips do not match your nose no more. Your lips don't match your cheekbones no more. Okay, you want to get your little filler? All right. You want to have a lip? All right, just get your little lip. But don't be out here. You see how different I went from hell mill looking at you like this, right? You look at me, you might say, okay, Tony, you look kind of normal. Now, how I'm going to look? No, walk around. Listen, ladies, stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Who told you women used to get, black women used to get bullied, picked on to no end for their lips? Since now, now who told you to go pump up your lips? Who told you your lips too little? I'm just wondering where y'all got that from. Who told you your lips is too little? Ain't nobody tell you that. Not the person you kissing. Not the man you kissing or the man you want to kiss ain't tell you that. You know what I'm saying? So, so who was it for? Because 9 out of 10 of the lip jobs do not look good. You look crazy. You need to just have you a look. If you want to go get it, okay, I get it. Your self-esteem and all that, just get you a little bit. Just get you a little bit. Oh, it looked good when it first was swole up, but then it went down. No, no. You looked like a bee stung you when it was swole up. You looked like you allergic to bee stings, and you got stung by the whole hive. It do not look good. Go get it dissolved. Or just let it dissolve and love what God gave you. Love what God gave you. Love what God gave you. I was looking at the rapper. I said, oh, Lord. On the, on the little show, Cameron, the rapper Cameron, he done went and got somebody else teeth put in his mouth. And I, and I want y'all to go look at Cameron. And I want y'all to, that is a clear example of when there is nothing wrong with the way God made your teeth and you go get somebody else's teeth. And when I go on that show, I'm going to tell Carol, I'm going to say, hey, boy, listen, boy, yeah, it look like you got somebody else's teeth in your mouth, boy. <laughs> but you talking for both of us. Why you asking me a question? Because I, I, I ain't no sense to be answering. You talking for both of us. Come on, now. Stop it. Y'all stop. You know what I did with these CDT? I went and put braces on them. I went and put braces on them. I'm not finna go get somebody else teeth in my mouth. And then I got to read, er, er, how you doing? Hey, what did what, 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 what I tell you? Listen, y'all, love yourself. Love yourself. You find the way God made you. Love yourself. Don't, don't feel like you got to go make permanent changes. See, my hair thinning. So what I do is I get my little, a little spray up there. It, it, it ain't permanent. I ain't got to go under the knife now. I ain't go. I get my little spray up there. Just get my little. Tss, 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 tss. If I want to take it out, just get in the shower. Shoo, let that water run. And then look 10 years older. If I want to go somewhere and, I, and they respect age is wisdom, 
I I wash that that spray out of there and go in there. I look ten years old. I I look forty nine instead of thirty nine. That's that's it. Listen, I'm gonna tell you. Get to the root of why you want to do something. Now, if it's for medical reasons, that's different. If it's medical reasons, that's different. And and y'all forget, I, I don't talk about people. I don't pick on people. Only reason why I said that about Cameron because he really go hard when he talk about people. So if he go that hard, calling somebody n word and trash and whatever else he want to call them scary, whatever else he want to call them, then I know I know he got to be in a position he could take it, but. Mm -mm. I can't, it's hard. I can't even hardly watch that show with them tea. And I, cause I'm sitting there, I'm like, no, them not veneer, them is dentures. Somebody done gave my man dentures. And they told him it was veneer. Listen, we got to do better though. You got to love, you got to start loving ourselves. I'm going to tell you that now. Hey, I got to go though. God bless you. I don't know what time it is. I got a coach call. God bless you. October 14th, we got the publishing boot camp. So you want to write a book, start a publishing company, be an author consultant, ghost writer. Make sure you join me on that. God bless you. We'll talk soon.